What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host that's wondering if you heard the good news that Mac Miller's Kids album is now streaming on all the major streaming platforms. It's old news at this point, but it's still good news, I love Mac Miller. Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. This story is called, Not Talking Trash is Sexual Assault? First time Reddit poster here, I don't know if this counts, but oh well, buckle down for a long explanation. Some background, I'm a plumber and I'm only 18. I went to a trade school for high school and came out with a full-time job as an apprentice. This happened about five months ago and has had me messed up ever since. I was working in a four-story building inside the city and there's only one elevator, which we weren't allowed to use because of the companies that worked in the building itself. And then only one spiral square staircase, needed for later. My journeyman and I were wrapping up our day and packing up everything. As the younger guy, I was sweeping and taking the loads back down to the truck to get ready to leave, and on one of my last trips, I was only taking a trash bag and a few of the hand tools I hadn't grabbed yet. I'm in my normal work clothes, but my boss isn't strict about wearing company clothing, so I'm only wearing my Dickies pants and a beat up sweatshirt with no labels. I start walking down the stairs with the trash from the fourth floor to the bottom when a worker, networking caller helpline company, from the third floor walked out with a trash bag. I briefly walked past, just finishing my day, when she scoffed at me. Me being the kid I am, turn around and say, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there, I didn't mean to bump into you, and continued down, and then she said, here, take this crap, I got a call that I need to get on. I said that I was sorry and I didn't work for the building and it's not my job to take it. So she then exclaims, You're dressed as a janitor. My son is one too. You're dressed just like him. He has the same tools on him all day. I try to tell her that I didn't and that I'm a plumber working above her on the fourth floor. In retrospect, yes, I could have taken it, but there wasn't one of those giant trash bins to put trash in, so we had to take it back to shop to dispose of it and we didn't have much room for more in the van. I started to get annoyed, but I just remembered that I needed to take breaths and walk away. I start going down the stairs when she grabbed the back of my hoodie and yanked it. I spun around like what the hell and she slammed the bag into my stomach sending me stumbling down the stairs. This was when one of her coworkers comes out cause of the commotion and she starts fake crying saying I sexually harassed her and that she shoved me down the stairs in an attempt to save herself. I tried to say something getting up but the guy was on the phone with the cops already and he took her away to calm her down. I started to get so mad at this woman, but my coworker came to me and said everything would be fine. This is when the biggest blessings ever occurred. My buddy loves to mess with me. He'd take videos of me working or being oblivious, and he'd like to throw coins at me to be funny or dump water on me just as a joke to lighten the day up a bit. Well, he recorded the interaction and the lady never knew he was there, reason why Spiral Staircase was important. By the time he made sure I was alright, the cops were there about 10 minutes later after the whole thing went down. They talk to the woman and they take her side of things at first. They start questioning me in the stairwell and my buddy said he witnessed it and had a video. He began to show the video to the cop of literally everything. From the moment I began down the stairs and past this lady to her shoving me down the stairs. He talks to her and from the second he said there was a video, she turned ghost white. They took her downstairs to the cruiser and the cop came back to me asking if I needed assistance or an ambulance as I had a gash on my elbow when I stumbled down, but I was totally fine though, just in complete shock. He also asked if I wanted to press charges and I said I would. In the following time since this happened, I've taken her to court, she's been charged, and is serving time for assault and battery, and another thing I don't recall. What's important to know, as I'm realizing now, is that there were no cameras in the stairwell. I would have been screwed. Absolutely screwed. It was a huge reality check for myself. I could be sitting in jail serving time for something I didn't do at this very moment. It could have ruined my life to be quite honest. 
Luckily, my buddy was there, and ever since then, I have never complained once about him messing around with me. Shortly after this, the building installed new cameras everywhere. Being five months later, my parents have been awesome in teaching me about all this stuff, especially since I'm a man and it can get scary with accusations like that. They believed me and I've always been raised by them to treat women right, and I'm the kid who wouldn't hurt a fly. Disclaimer, I typed this on my phone, and I sucked in English all my life, so I know the grammar is probably terrible. Don't worry, buddy. But holy crap, that is terrifying. Imagine just being fresh out of high school, and this woman lies and absolutely ruins your life. Holy cow, I am now seeing the value in cameras. Now, I'm curious, what's the investigative process for situations like this? Say if there was no footage of what happened, and basically it was her word versus his, who would have had the benefit of the doubt? Now, I do know that the burden of proof is always on the prosecution's side, and they have to work on proving him guilty as opposed to him proving himself innocent, but we all know just the fact that the accusation exists in the first place are some points for the prosecution. Because it doesn't matter if it is false, there's always going to be that association with that person, and it could damage them for life. So, commenters that know more about this than I do, which is probably a lot of you, this 18-year-old kid gets accused out of nowhere for assaulting this woman. How likely is he to get away with it, alright, without all the footage? This story is called, Karen Thinks I'm a Cop and Has a Fit. So, this is just a warning, but this happened literally years ago, so some of the details are a bit fuzzy to me, so sorry about that. But I figured I'd post it anyway since I'm sure someone will enjoy it, so I'll just tell it how I remember it. If any Reddit tubers like r slash mk daily dose of reddit voicey here and etc decide to read this, my family lived in Texas at the time, <laughs> so you can have fun with the voices. Here's the setup of what happened. I was a 15 year old boy at the time in the police explorers. If you don't know what that is, it's pretty much the scouts except geared towards helping youth learn about police and eventually getting a career in law enforcement. My father was a patrol sergeant at the local constable office, so he was a supervisor. The constable was close with most of his officers and was a family friend. He had known me since I was around six. I was in an explorer's uniform, so I did kind of look like an officer, but I was obviously too young. We had just gotten back from the explorers and I stopped by the station so he could take care of something real fast. I don't remember what, and so I waited in front of the station for him. I sat down and put earbuds in to waste time waiting for my father. About three minutes in, I feel that uncomfortable feeling you get when someone stares at you for a while. So I look up and see her. It was the dreaded Karen. Ridiculous dyed bob and all. Here's the cast, there's me, my dad, the constable, Karen, police officer one, police officer two. I take out my earbuds and look up asking, do you need something from me miss? She scoffed at me and said, finally, you shouldn't be on your phone on the job. She stops to look at my name on the uniform. Oh, Pete, I'm going to have a little chat with your supervisor after this. I was a little confused, seeing as I am obviously too young to be a cop, but felt like I could clear this up pretty fast. I made the mistake of stopping her. Ma'am, I'm a police explorer, not a... She snapped at me. Don't you interrupt me. I want to file a report, so go behind the desk and do your job. I look at her with a, you have got to be kidding me look, and decide I don't want to deal with this and decide to wait for my dad outside instead. I start to walk off, admittedly another dumb mistake on my part. Karen is a bit taken aback at first, but recovers fast and follows me, yelling and screaming about how rude I am for walking away from her and how she's going to have my badge for treating her this way. Yeah, sure lady, take my explorer's badge. Right before I get out, one of my dad's friends walks in. Hey there, OP. Where's dad? I need to talk to him. Of course, the instant he showed up, Karen jumped on poor cop one and starts going off about how I wasn't doing my job and I was rude. Cop one stopped her. Ma'am, OP's not an officer. He's a police explorer. 
Karen stops and tries to process what he said and fails to do so. Maybe she just didn't know what an explorer was. Who cares? It's his job to help me. Do you know who I am? The legendary response. Cop 1 decided to drop trying to explain what a police explorer was and just decided to defuse the situation. No, I don't. Look, ma'am, if you have a problem or concern, you should go to the front desk. They should be able to help you better. At this point, this is obviously causing a scene and another of my dad's coworkers pulls me aside as Cop 1 tries to deal with her. OP, what is going on here? She asked me as we went a bit further away from them. Well, Miss Cop 2, I was sitting here waiting for my dad, and this lady, I gestured towards her, started going off on me for being rude and not doing my job. I did the air quotes. She looks at me, then back over to Karen and Cop 1. OP, I'm sure Cop 1 will take care of this. Do you want to wait in the back for dad? I say yes and follow her to the back. About three or so minutes in, my dad comes out and sees me sitting in the back waiting for him with Cop 2. Hey Cop 2, what's OP doing back here? Did something happen? Yeah, there was this woman up front harassing OP, so I took him back here to wait. My father talked to Cop 2 and says he'll take care of it. He walks off to let the constable know about the disturbance up front and not to worry about it. Then comes back a few minutes later. He took me up front to leave. The woman saw me and my father about to walk out and made a beeline towards us, completely blowing off Cop 1 as she did. Excuse me, are you a supervisor? My father, who literally towers over her, looks down at this Karen. Yes, do you need something, miss? Yes, I would like to have a talk with you about your officer's attitude. My father looked down at me. I nodded at him as if to say this is her. My dad was about to have a talk with her, but then the constable came up front. OP, come to my office, he said in a commanding voice. Um, I looked up to my dad, a bit worried now. Go ahead. He gently pushed me in constable's direction. So I walk over to constable and follow him to his office. Karen looked pleased, thinking I was in trouble, then turned back to my father. Constable and I sat down in his office, and I looked at him, confused. Your dad told me what's going on. I didn't want you to have to deal with her. My wife made some cookies. Would you like some? Sure. I went ahead and took a few, thanking him. We sat in the office for about two minutes, then Constable took me out front. At this point, Karen seemed pretty upset. Obviously because my father talked her down. So I walk over to my father and he went to talk with Cop 1 for a bit. As this was happening, Karen decided to go to Constable to start to complain. Constable interrupted her and told her something about how I was clearly a teenager, not a police officer. And even if I was an officer, she was out of line for treating his officers and I the way she did. If she needed something, she would have to go to the front desk like everyone else. I'm not sure what happened to her after that, as we left the station pretty quickly after my dad talked to Cop 1, and Karen didn't come outside. They killed her. I'm just kidding. However, if I could take creative liberties with the story, I definitely would make that the case. Man, I've got some good stuff to add to this. However, that would make it not true. Anyways, all that aside, that's a cool story. Sounds like a cool place to grow up around. I like it when coworkers are cool with each other's kids and all that stuff, because I know when my dad used to work at cons when I was a little kid, and he'd take me to the store with him because he was a single dad at the time. It was always so cool because all his coworkers and friends were always so nice to me, and I'd get a bunch of free crap like drinks and cookies, and I was a fat kid. Also, this is very irrelevant. My mom made lemonade, okay? However, she's Pakistani. This story is called, Mistaken for a Caterer at My Own Wedding Party. And it says, edit, today I learned the term chutzpah, which is uh, kind of like uh, unapologetic, like someone who is unapologetic, they have a lot of chutzpah. My wedding party was very informal. We wore sports jerseys. A lot of family and friends of family came, including a batch of people that I didn't even know, which got a little weird because we still only personally invited everyone and told everyone to let us know if they have a plus one and it would be fine for us to invite them. This is so we could track catering expenses and space concerns. 
It was a rough day, and I was very limited in support, and I was taking care of most setup and issues myself in a party of roughly 80 people. It felt more like work than a party. The time finally came where I could rest when issues were taken care of. About halfway through the party, the sun was beginning to set. I sat down in the corner and wiped the sweat off my face and looked over at my food. Everyone had eaten except me, so I was ready to finally dive into the food I paid for. Some woman I never met in her late 20s asked me to bring a plate for her kids. I'm sorry, ma'am. I want to bring some stuff for my wife and start eating myself. Oh, caterers can bring their family to events like this? Somewhat confused at her response. The caterers here are a family business, so sort of. Isn't it inappropriate for you to eat food someone else paid for? Confused even further, but giving a chuckle, I paid for it. I'm sorry, who did you come here with? Oh really? You must be the party planner. Are you a friend of the groom's? I was invited by the groom. I'm Francine. <laughs> no, I'm the groom. Oh, I'm sorry. How embarrassing. You're the groom. Hey, nice to meet you. I sent invitations by name, but we also requested feedback for the plus invitations. I don't believe I sent you an invitation. I think everyone invited more people than we initially wanted. Uh-oh, am I and my kids okay to be here? I'm actually sister's friend's friend. They said it was okay. Oh yes, that'll be perfectly fine. We have much more food than I had thought. It won't be an issue. Nice to meet you. I came to the table with my wife and her grandmother, and we finally ate. My wife to me? Damn girl, you flirting with all the ladies at our wedding party or what? I know that a plus one of a plus one that was uninvited is generally uncool, but there was no need to stress it. Everyone had a good time and there was actually too much food. That's a way to look at it. If you want to make your wedding memorable for everyone, then yeah, you want to make sure everyone has a fantastic time. Make it a freaking party. Make it go, make it crazy, make it fun. However, that is also expensive, so be prepared to win the lottery before you do that. But if you want to make it intimate and very sweet and a low, a low fanfare affair, then you do your thing. It's your day. Make it for you or make it for everyone. Personally, I think I'm going to do two weddings. One's going to be, you know, the real deal sort of thing. Just the important stuff like making your marriage official, uh, making out in front of people. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.